Hi there. Uh, once again, Brian, coming to you from my beloved nondescript city in the southwestern part of the United States. Going to get right to it. The um, and my channel lately has featured the comments of an individual, but who goes by the handle Muslim Kid 2009, and um, I'm going to read for you his comment on my channel, which um, goes something like this: Stronzo 5785. It's like you read but do not understand. The crowd, he's talking about John the eighth chapter. The crowd was accusing Jesus of blasphemy and were ready to stone him. We agree about that. Jesus, on the other hand, refuted their accusation by denying he ever committed such blasphemy. I've asked Muslim Kid 2009 to show exactly where this menacing crowd. <laughs> Or, or where Jesus denied he was God anywhere in that chapter. You see, in, once again, the verbiage used in the 58th verse of John, the 8th chapter, specifically states Jesus using about himself the verbiage, I am. Before Abraham was born, I am. Not... He is using a, he is using verbiage that only God uses about himself. Jesus equated himself with deity, equated himself with the Father in this passage. You can't redefine your way out of this, Muslim Kid 2009. I'm sorry. If you can show me anywhere other than you're going to go to eight, uh, John 8.28, try to use that, those little words. The context of that passage is obedience. So we're not talking about positionality. We're talking about one obeying another. Okay? You can obey somebody and be their equal. Piece of cake. When one of the people who work for me asks me for something, I obey them. They work for me. But we're equals. We're all trying to get the same job done at the same time, and I'm going to help them. I'm going to give them what they need. I'm going to obey their request. You're not going to redefine your way out of this, Muslim Kid 2009. Sorry, there is no passage that anywhere in there that indicates that Jesus was not equating himself with the Father. If anything, he, emph he emphatically does so, and the Jews wanted to pick up stones to stone him for blasphemy. Blasphemy is incorrectly assigning oneself oneself deity, equating oneself with God. So, your point, you know, you exhibit a very similar, a very similar tactic here to Ahmed Didot. Let's talk about Ahmed Didot for a minute. I got his combat kit. Um, Combat kit against the Bible thumpers, which is the whole passage, and he, he, the first error is right on the cover. He thinks that Jehovah's Witnesses are Christians. Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christian. They deny the deity of Jesus. They don't feel as though their salvation will come, their reconciliation with God will come through the cross. They deny the cross. They're not Christians. They are not Christians. One of the most absurd things I think I've ever seen is in a section is under AIDS and homosexuality, Ahmed Didot construes Romans 1, 22 through 27 as the cause of the blight of AIDS. No, no, no. AIDS was caused by a crossover virus from a monkey to, a, to an individual to patient zero who was a Montreal flight attendant. And this flight attendant who happened to have also been homosexual, brought it to the rest of the world, flew all over the place and was sexually promiscuous. That's not... God didn't do that. That happened. This guy got bit by a monkey or somehow caught the virus that had mutated. No, 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 no. You, you, you're not going to do this. If DDOT were alive, we would be in his face about this. Indeed, while he was alive... Christians like David Foster, Anisharosh, they were in his face about this. These are offensive. Um, stating that, that God commands us to eat excrement and drink urine. No, 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 no. Those were the tauntings of an Assyrian general. If you read 
2 Kings, the 18th chapter, in toto, if you catch who was being spoken to, why those words were being spoken, and, and how they were received by the Israelites even better, you'll understand that they were taunts. He would then counter, but a holy book from, by, from God shouldn't contain such language. The Quran, if you want to do that, the Quran contains a reference to cannibalism, a direct reference to cannibalism. So the Quran also contains such strong language. You can't wiggle your way out of that one either. Unfortunately, Muslim after Muslim will use DDOT's methodology in biblical exegesis. Every single one of these, of these, everything in this combat kit is so ridiculous. You simply read the passage in context and you understand, you understand what is actually being stated. Ezekiel 4, verse uh, 12 through 15 doesn't instruct Ezekiel to eat cake with excrement. He instructs Ezekiel to cook the cake with excrement human excrement to make a point of the idolatry that was happening in Israel at that time. Ezekiel the 23rd chapter uses disgusting sexual references, yes, to emphasize to the Israelites that what they were doing in their idolatry was so offensive to God, there was no other language they would have understood. They had no other way to understand except by using such strong language. God doesn't pull punches. God comes to us with an attitude of respect and tells us like it, exactly like it is. Um, the prophecies that he alleges in, in Psalm 84, 6, you know, Baca is Mecca. I don't know where he got that. Uh, that's, that's just, that just defies logic and it tests the limits of, of human thinking. To draw this to a conclusion, to make it a close, to hopefully bring a close to this chapter, of course it won't because we're always going to have some Muslim out there who reads Ahmed Didat and thinks that Ahmed Didat actually knew one or two things about the Bible. He didn't. He didn't know biblical exegesis. He was unaware of Greek, the use of the nominative and um, the, of any of the nominative forms of Koine Greek. He didn't. I don't. I doubt he was even aware that Koine Greek was the language, the written language, of the New Testament. I doubt it. So, you know, look. What are we going to do with this? Easy. Every time a Muslim makes a statement to me about my scripture, I fact check them. I make sure their facts, what they say, agrees with common sense, with proper biblical exegesis and with an understanding and a full reading with context of the passage. It's not hard. A little education yields a great reward. Salvation and reunification with God the Father. Re true reconciliation that Jesus accomplished on the cross. My name is Brian. I come to you once again from my beloved nondescript city in the southwestern part of the United States, wishing you once again the peace, joy, and blessings of the risen Savior, God the Son, Jesus Christ.